Rugby World Cup 2023, folks. England and Japan from Pool D. We are going to go through some squads, recent history, predictions, stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one's going to go. Both sides getting wins in their opening round. England, especially George Ford, very, very impressive uh, against Argentina. You know, really kept the, the, the Pumas just looking kind of directionless. England looked very, very comfortable. And um, Japan bullied the kind of Chileans around with a display which was maybe a little bit more forward orientated than we're used to seeing from Japan but anyway we'll see how these sides go up against each other it's ranked six in the world up against 14 so just quietly England are predicted to get this one done relatively comfortably every time they've met in the past England has managed to get a win there three zip in their history which goes back to 1987 when it was 60 points to seven we've had a 35-15 and a 52-13 there as well. So England, you know, generally at least 20 plus points better than Japan when they have played. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it's predicted to go this week as well. England have made kind of minimal changes from their side, which played at the weekend, although they have done a little bit of tinkering. Marla gets a start after being on the bench last time. George continues on and Kyle Sinclair is now back fit, which is a bit of good news after having a injury cloud over him for a while Etoje and Chisholm continue on in the second row and Etoje didn't get maybe the plaudits that he that George Ford would have got last week but you know much of what England was doing that was so impressive was their huge defensive shift the Argentinian guys as I said just didn't have an answer for it 14 from 17 tackles from from uh, Maro Courtney was there doing the same thing as well at number six and he continues on Ben Earl this week switches to number seven remember he won a few turnovers in that game against Argentina as well. And then Lewis Ludlam, who came on for like less than 20 minutes and still managed double-figure tackles, 11, uh, was also pretty impressive. He's at number 8. Alex Mitchell and George Ford, 9 and 10. I mean, everyone's been singing George Ford's praises, and I am certainly one of them. He was incredible. But Alex Mitchell also beat like three defenders in an England side, which doesn't beat that many defenders. So he is one of the kind of more live-wire players. Marchin and Tuilangi continue on at 13 and 12, respectively. Daly and May are still on the wings, and then Freddie Stewart is still there at fullback. Dan, Genge, and Stewart, that is the front row replacements. George Martin, Billy V is back on the bench, so I expect him to try and add a bit of punch. Ben Youngs is in. Marcus Smith and Ollie Lawrence keep their bench spots respectively. So like I said, it's, uh, it's pretty stable stuff. Likewise from Japan, they've not made a heck of a lot of changes. The front row is mostly the same, with the same props, Inagaki and Gu. Inagaki was also defensively very sound. I remember Chile spun the ball against Japan. So Japan had to do some defending. Uh, Inagaki was one of the key men there. And then uh, Horia is the one change in the front row. So he gets a start at hooker and Sakate drops to the bench. So it's a straight swap for them. Cornelson shifts to the second row for this one uh, alongside Amato Fakatava. you got to watch Amato Fakatava, man. He's a lock, but he's a try scorer and lock. He loves uh, a carry. And he runs off that kind of, um, you know, the shoulders of, of his 9 or his 10 looking for those gaps. So you certainly got to keep an eye on him. Uh, Michael Leach, Lapis Labaskakni, and uh, Kazuki Jimeno. That's the back row. Remember, Jimeno didn't end up playing last week. I think he was initially named, but then didn't play. So, um, yeah, he's a good addition to have back. And then Labaskakni, now that he's served his ban from his red card, he's a tackling machine at 7. Although Leach had 15 tackles in his game last week as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of tackling in that Japanese back row. Nagare and Matsuda continue on at 9 and 10. I think Matsuda kicked all his goals last week, which was pleasing. Nakamura and Osada is the midfield, so Osada is up from the bench. Dylan Royalty dropped, so it's another kind of straight swap. Osada looks pacey from what limited amount I've seen of him in the Pacific Nations Cup this year. Matsushima, Naikabula, and Masarewa is the same back three. Expect to see Masarewa and Matsushima kind of continue to swap their kind of full back end uh wing rolls respectively throughout the game because uh Matsushima I think certainly got the better boot of the two. Uh Sakate Miller and Ivalo that's the same well same front row replacements as last week although Sakate is now new to the bench. Uh Derns, Shimokawa are your two forward replacements Saito, Riley and Lemeki three back replacements. So one of the few games this week where it's two sides and neither of them have got a six two split. Uh stats wise England this year have been only managing 3.4 meters per carry, which is the same as Wales, which, if you don't know, kind of highlights the fact that their attacking game 
is not particularly sharp or piercing like four is generally the the line where you're like if you're that or above you're getting it over the advantage line usually pretty well um some of the teams have well over four 4.5 4.6 meters of carry the only team which is below england in this regard is argentina who you saw last week as attack is also pretty blunt However, where England have excelled is their kicking game. They've been kicking 32 times a game. They kick 43 times against Argentina. A lot of teams kicked a lot last week with the kind of high heat and slippery ball. But um, yeah, if, if Japan cannot deal with England's kicking game, if they send Freddie Stewart chasing high balls all day, and um, if the Japanese back three don't take him, they could be in for a bit of a tough day at the office. But I mean, if they can shut that down, and they can keep George Ford from getting drop goals and penalties, then, you know, England's options may be a bit more limited. They only managed one clean break against Argentina. I don't think any other team was limited to one clean break last week. Even Argentina got three against England in the same fixture. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting one to see whether Japan sees that game plan coming and does anything to stop it. Japan, on the other hand, they mauled six times against Chile, which seemed uncharacteristic because they didn't maul it at all against Italy just before the World Cup. I think they mauled it like once against Fiji, once against like Samoa. They, they mauled it about three times in the entire Pacific Nations Cup. So Japan is not really a maul team, but they did use that forward advantage against Chile. And they didn't offload it that much. They only offloaded twice against Chile, whereas they usually offload it like seven times a game. Japan likes to chuck the ball around. So... It's almost like they played a different game plan against Chile. Maybe because Chile plays so expansive, they wanted to kind of tighten things up. Whereas maybe against a tighter team like England, they will have to go a bit looser. Try to run the England guys around. we we'll have to kind of wait and see. But yeah, um, some of those stats I found pretty interesting, just quietly. Uh, it is on at Nice, Nika Amashukeli. The Georgian is the ref. It's the late kickoff, so 9 p.m. local time. 7 o'clock in the morning for me here in NZ, which is pretty nice timing. Uh, Predictions-wise... The bookies say England by 20 points. Rugby forecast algorithm agrees and says England by 20 points. If you want to get on the Steve Borthwick bandwagon, get yourself some England gear. Check out England Rugby Store, link down in the description. Use that link and old two cents get some commission. Happy days. You don't get charged anymore, but they, they give me some commission. So wouldn't that be nice for all of us? You get some England gear, two cents gets a couple of quid. Happy, happy days. You guys let us know your thoughts on the game how do you think it's going to go do you see england just being too good for japan like the bookies are expecting or do you think jamie joseph has got something masterful up his sleeve you guys let us know your thoughts and um yeah talk to you guys again soon yeah.